Good day, folks, and welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. We are currently under construction, so if you hear any crazy noises, I apologize. So today we're looking at the 2023 Santa Cruz Ultimate. Now, this one has changed a little bit from the 2022 model, and you might notice that right off the bat. First off, I gotta say, it looks super cool with these new black wheels. Uh, we got the black wheels, the running boards, and now, is this by any chance the most off-road ready Hyundai that you can get? Well, probably because it has front and rear skid plates. Let's look underneath and see if we can see those. All right, and the answer to our question is no, it's still plastic. <laughs> yeah, they're calling that a skid plate. Well, for those of us in the off-road community, plastic doesn't cut it <laughs> for skid plates. But what they're essentially referring to is the front section there, the lower lip of the front bumper and the rear. So this is a little bit different than the 2022 as well, uh, but it's, I mean, it looks basically the same. So not really much has changed there, but I gotta say the running boards look really nice and they actually look fairly beefy. They're metal and let's see how far they go under here. Eh. I mean, you wouldn't want to use it as a rock slider, <laughs> but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Let's see, let's see here. Yeah, seems pretty durable. Uh, but let's have a look at this vehicle here. Now, for those of you who haven't already seen my 2022 Ultimate video, please check it out. I'll link that in the description below. Um, but anyway, the other new thing about this, of course, is the color. This is California sand. So no longer do we have the old sand color. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's now California sand. It's a little bit darker but it's not so different that I would call it a change necessarily. Um, but I, I don't know, something about it. I, I can't quite tell if it looks better this color or not, but with the black wheels and the running boards, it does look better with that. So maybe that's just what's throwing me off a little bit. But anyway, you got the cool profile of the running lights there, of course, which is pretty nice. Um, you of course still have the LED daytime running lights um, or sorry, the LED headlights and high beams um, flanked by the turn signal here, which looks really cool. Uh, nice sort of dark chrome grill, and you can see the camera peeking out there because, of course, this one does have the 360 camera system. Uh, you've got the forward-facing radar there, and then looking in the window up here, you got the forward-facing camera for the lane keep assist, uh, as well as pedestrian detection and whatnot. All right, so these wheels, these are, let me see, I think they're a 19-inch, uh, they're first off they are up, wrapped in Michelin tires. It's a 245 50 20 inch actually aluminum alloy wheel of course and uh, the Michelin tires on this are M plus S rated tires so legal to use anywhere in British Columbia at any time but still winter tires would be better in the winter of course. Looking at the mirrors you got the marker lights on the mirrors here there's the camera there for the 360 system and then, of course, you have the blind spot monitoring in the mirror as well. And then pulling further back, you can see we've got the proximity entry button on the handle here. And there is a little light here that lights up as you approach the vehicle. Check out the business end of the Santa Cruz. Now, I'm not going to spend as much time in this video on this vehicle, only because it only has changed in sort of cosmetic way. Uh, but yeah, check it out. You've got the uh, sort of slow, dampened tailgate opening. And that'll actually go a little bit faster as it ages. Uh, but I'll give it a little bit of help right now. Um, we can open up the tonneau cover simply by pressing that. And of course you can have that stop at a half distance as well if you pull the handle back. You've got the tie downs here, storage there. Inside this one you have the uh, 120 volt power outlet. And then of course you have the little bed trunk here as well, which is sealed nicely. It is water, well, waterproof, water resistant. It's got drains in it in case you want to fill this up with ice uh, to drain the water out afterwards as well. So, usable, I think so. Uh, from the wall there to the back is about six feet. So if you are carrying a uh, piece of four by eight sheet of plywood, you can actually take these and hook them into this little spot right here. And that brings this up to the same level as the wheel wells. And basically you slide your piece of wood into that. So it's actually quite usable. Fuel doors on the left side, and it actually will remain locked if your doors are locked, so don't have to worry about people stealing your fuel. Uh, having a look at the back seat space. Now, I apologize for all the plastic guys. This vehicle just came off the truck. Um, my lot guy did take some of the plastic off, but it's still got some here, so. Uh, we have the flip-up rear bench seats, a little bit of storage there. On the other side, it's the same idea, except the uh, 
the jack is there, okay? Uh, this does lock in, so you gotta pull this to, to release it back down again. You have a uh, uh, center seat here, but it doesn't actually fold down. There's no center cup holder armrest here because the cup holders are actually in the doors. Um, ignore the plastic here, guys. Uh, yeah, as far as space, well, this seat is sort of in a normal position for me, so let me just jump in here. Whoop. All right. Okay, so seat back, it's fairly comfortable. I've got just enough space in front of my knees here, as you can see, and it's a nice hard seat back as well. So if people are banging into that when you get in, or when they get in, it's not gonna affect the driver or the, or the passenger as much either. Um, inside here, you can see we've got some USB ports here. They are backlit, so you can see them at night. And then you got the uh, the vents there as well. And then looking up at the headliner, nice black headliner, you got the handles uh, in all four positions. So driver and driver's uh, rear passenger and everything all get it. Of course, this one does have the sunroof as well. All right, a quick boo under the hood at this awesome 2.5 liter smart stream turbo four cylinder engine. This vehicle makes 291 horsepower, 311 foot pounds of torque. Honestly, this is a phenomenal drivetrain. Eight speed, wet dual clutch transmission. There was recently an, a, a recall on it, but it's pretty minor. Um, so don't worry about that too much. But as far as the drive of this vehicle, it's one of the nicest driving Hyundais you can get right now. It's a lot of power and it gets this vehicle moving very, very quickly. A couple things I really like under here, really easy access to the air filter. So you just put this down, put this down, and then you can pull the air filter out just like that. Not gonna do it because the engine's running. Uh, easy access to the battery. So you got your positive terminal right here and your negative terminal right there, fuse box. Yeah, it's just really well laid out. Uh, on this side here, windshield washer fluid right up front, easy to get to. And everything's really nicely covered up as well. And even the, even the insulation under the hood is buttoned up really, really nicely. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the fuel efficiency of this vehicle isn't the most spectacular thing. This vehicle is really designed for power. It can tow 5,000 pounds, and it has a payload capacity of around 1,700 pounds, which is ridiculously good. The 5,000 pound tow capacity does come at the requirement of needing trailer brakes. However, it pulls it no problem at all. As far as the fuel economy on these vehicles, if you're looking for something that's very fuel efficient, you may have to wait for the hybrid version to come out eventually. Let's jump into the front seat. Now, before I actually get in, I wanna point out the seat is power on the driver's side. You have the adjustable tilt, adjustable height, backrest, of course, and then the lower bar, uh, lumbar support. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10-way adjustable power. And then, of course, the headrests go up and down as well. For the passenger side, sadly, it is not power. It does have, of course, the adjustable backrest and then the uh, position there. Uh, so pretty basic passenger seat. I think Hyundai could probably step up and do a little better there. Now, where Hyundai certainly hasn't skimped out is interior features. Check this out. Well, I guess that was an interior feature, but anyway, check this out. So we've got a beautiful 10 inch instrument cluster display there. And when you change the drive modes, it actually changes the display, which is super cool. And then a 10 inch uh, 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 infotainment system as well with multiple user profiles, which is always nice, of course. And what's really good about this one is it does have the built-in navigation system. Uh, and the navigation system is free maps for life. Sorry, I'm just trying to get past this user profile setting. Here we go. So free maps for life, 3D mapping system. Check it out, really, really nice system. Again, if you haven't already seen the 22 video, please check that out in the link in the description below. Um, we have automatic dual zone climate control with multi-level automatic, which is kind of nice. I'm gonna shut that off for, for now. Uh, downside, unfortunately, there is no hard buttons here. This is all touch sensitive. They do work really, really well though, but I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna suggest that it's better, but you know, once you, once you get used to using the, um, the volume buttons and the nav and the, uh, uh, the, yeah, the other ones, it's, it's honestly, it's fine. And really, if you're driving, you should be using these buttons anyway. You got paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel, which do a really nice job if you want to drive in a more sporting manner. On the left-hand side here, you can see we've got our dimmer switch our box light, which is kind of nice, traction stability control, which can be completely defe uh, defeated, which is cool. Uh, you have auto headlights as well as auto high beams. And then on the right-hand stock here, you can see our window wiper stock. It is auto wipers as well. Now, having a look at the, the uh, instrument cluster there, check this out. If I put on the signal, it actually shows me a view down the side of the vehicle, which is awesome. And then same on the other side, 
this is a really, really nice instrument cluster, guys. And look at this. It doesn't actually have a hood. It doesn't need it because it's such a bright screen. It works exceptionally well. Now, don't mind the glare. That's just because there's still some uh, protective film over it. Okay. Uh, same with the screen here. Looking down at the comfort control. So we have ventilated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel. And uh, a little bit further up, we have our controls for our drive. So our drive terrain buttons. Um, now, in Canada, we actually get snow mode, smud, no, <laughs> smud, <laughs> snow mode, mud mode, and sand mode. That's going to basically uh, alter the all-wheel drive dynamics, uh, lock a center differential, etc., to make the vehicle a little bit more capable. Then we also have normal sport and smart for the regular drive modes. So smart mode is going to be uh, kind of like your eco uh, sport's going to give you more power, that sort of thing. We have our power e-brake, an auto hold, uh, hill descent assist, and a little picture of a Santa Cruz, which is kind of cool. And then the button here for the backup camera system or the 360 camera system. And check this out. Look at how good this camera is. Now, there's the camera's dirty, so there's a couple of black spots on there. But look at how sharp the image is. It's super clear, as is the top-down camera system. And I love how Hyundai has the sort of swing of the vehicle showing there with the dynamic steering lines as well. And, of course, you can also alter the view so it's straight down or... Ooh, there was a bug. <laughs> you can also see... Uh, the side-by-side -side images here for parallel parking, so you got both sides of the vehicle. All right, so pretty cool system there. Uh, down here, we do have a wireless charging pad, 15 watts, so very, very quick wireless charging, and that's Qi wireless, so nice, uh, typical standard that everyone uses. You can also see we do have some ambient lighting in this vehicle. Currently, it is blue. I think we can actually change that if we go into setup and vehicle and lights. Ambient light. Yep, here we go. And we can actually have it dim in the dark or not. So I'm going to turn that off. And we're going to crank the brightness. It's good. Okay, let's check out some of these colors here. So lots of different colors. There's violet there, purple, sunrise red, freesia yellow. <laughs> and then you can also go to custom color. So we tap that. You can actually choose whatever color you want. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Now, that doesn't just come out down there. It also comes out in the door pockets as well. Um, and I believe... No, nope, not down there. So I think it's just the door pockets and down here. Uh, judging by what I'm seeing on the screen here anyway. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about the screen this time, guys. There's just too much to cover there. So please just check out my video on the 22. Uh, or check out the in-depth analysis of the infotainment system on the Hyundai Palisade because it's basically the same thing. And I'll leave a link to the, in the description below for that as well. You got our auto dimming mirror with home link buttons. And this vehicle does, of course, have blue link free for three years in Canada. Uh, you got a sunroof con control here, manual shade, of course. Now, as far as buttons on the steering wheel go, the nice thing about this is that all of these buttons on the left side here, uh, including this dirty one, are actually for the stereo. Now, there's this customizable one, which we usually set up to just hang up phone calls and cancel the voice prompts. You got the answer button here, voice recognition, mode switches between where music's coming from, going to, and you got your volume rocker, and then next song, previous song, or next preset, previous preset. On the right-hand side, you've got your cruise control buttons. This vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control. That's how you set your speed, adjust your speed, and adjust the length of uh, space between you and the car in front of you. And then these ones here control all of the stuff on this little center screen. Again, if you haven't already watched the 22 video, please watch it because I do go through all of those things in depth. And then you also have your lane keep assist at low speeds. So you've got lane follow assist, lane keep assist. They're basically the same thing. They just keep the vehicle centered in the lines. Um, one is on by default, and you can see the icon for it right there. When that lights up green, you must be going over 64 kilometers an hour and the vehicle can see the lines on the road and then it starts to steer within them. This one here, it puts a little steering wheel on the screen beside it. When it goes green, that means you're going whatever speed you want uh, and it'll do the same thing. Now, part of the uh, safety features that are included with some of the technology here, I want to quickly just show you. Uh, so if we go into setup and then into vehicle, driver assistance, you can see We've got driving convenience, forward, that's the adaptive cruise, etc. Forward safety. So forward safety includes active assist when the vehicle in front of you slams on the brakes and you don't notice it. Uh, it also has pedestrian detection as well and cyclist detection. Lane safety. 
There's your lane keep assist, blind spot safety, blind view monitor. So that's what would happen when we put the signal on. You got safe exit warning. So when you're exiting the vehicle after parallel parking, it'll pick up vehicles coming down from the sides. Active assist means that when you're when you have a vehicle in your blind spot, it actually actively will uh, correct if you start to drift over towards them. And you can set that all to warning only or turn that all off. Uh, parking safety, you can see we got rear cross traffic safety alert. So that's where the vehicle will actually warn you if there's a pedestrian or a car coming from either side when you're backing out of a parking space. And check this out. So warning sound and haptic. So you can actually have the vehicle lower all the audio volumes when your uh, parking system is enabled. Um, or when any of the warnings come on. So at a lower like music volume and stuff like that. Uh, you've got uh, speed limit control and warning. So you got assist right here and warning. So if you start to go over the speed limit and you can adjust that by a different offset as well. Under driving assistant or driving convenience, you can see we had highway drive assist and highway auto speed change. So automatically adjust the vehicle speed on highway based on nav data. So if the navigation system detects that you are supposed to be driving hundred or whatever, it'll actually go to that speed. Cool thing, just little, a little cool thing just popped up, guys. Check this out. Vehicle will be turned off automatically in 29 minutes and 52 seconds. That's actually because I haven't touched the gas or brake or steering or anything like that in a few minutes, so it thinks there's nobody in the car. Pretty neat, eh? So anyway, so that's all the safety tech that I wanted to quickly show you. This vehicle, of course, is equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, but it is just wired on this vehicle. It's not wireless because it has the built-in navigation system. So if anybody from Hyundai is watching this, I will call you out again. Please get that fixed, you guys. You can actually get wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and other manufacturers' vehicles that have built-in navigation. This is getting a little bit frustrating, especially considering you can now buy products that you plug into the USB port to enable that functionality. Lastly, real quick, with the uh, uh, controls here for the automatic climate control, I just want to point out this diffuse button is super cool. It diffuses the air through these tiny little holes in the dash. Check this out. If I get real close, you can see them there. All right, top and bottom, and then a bit more here as well. Uh, and that's so you don't have the, the air blasting directly on you. Downside, of course, when you turn that on is it disables the automatic functionality. That's too bad. And then, of course, both of the side visors do slide, and they both have mirrors and lights. All right, so what's included in your purchase of a Santa Cruz? Well, you get the, in Canada anyway, five-year, 100,000-kilometer comprehensive warranty. Uh, that covers almost everything in the car. There is a few exceptions, though. And then you get three years of free Blue Link. Now, Blue Link allows you to remotely start the car from your cell phone, unlock the doors, lock the doors uh, from your cell phone. You can actually configure how the vehicle starts, whether or not you want the heated seats on or the ventilated seats, the defrost or whatever. Um, you can find the vehicle on a map if you've lost it or if somebody's stolen it. Uh, and then of course, if you get into an accident, it automatically calls emergency services for you. So these are a few of the things you can do with Blue Link. Now, if I'm honest, Blue Link has been, it has a bit of a troubled history. There's been a lot of issues with the app over the years, but it is getting better. They just recently revamped the app and it seems to be working quite a bit better than it used to. Um, but keep in mind, it is still fairly new. We're talking about three or four years old in Canada. Um, but yeah, that all comes with it for free for three years anyway. After three years, it's between 10 to $30 a month in Canada. But anyway, that's about it. I uh, don't really have much more to say about it. It hasn't really changed much from 2022 to 23, aside from some cosmetic updates with those wheels and those running boards and the skid plates. Uh, but um, yeah, great car, drives awesome. Definitely go check it out if you have one in your area. This one's actually sold. Otherwise, I would take you for a drive, but uh, can't. So thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Appreciate all the support, guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment below. And if you do comment, I would also appreciate it if you could subscribe and like the video. Um, just it does help the channel, of course. And uh, the channel is growing, but it's growing very slowly. Videos like this are... Um, you know, few and far between. A lot of a lot of other YouTubers do make review videos, but very few tend to do as much detail uh, as I do. So keep that in mind when you're uh, subscribing. Uh, as far as future videos, uh, don't forget to uh, hit the bell icon uh, for notifications of future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.